welcome back. You're still watching Countdown with us. Just 27 minutes to go for markets to close and we are back below that mark of 11,200. Nifty just up about 40 points after being up almost 140 to 50 points in trade. So clearly looks like the bounce from that 100 day moving average was on account of short covering. Once again, index is falling off. Let's see where the closing comes about, whether we can close above that mark of 11,200 or not. The broader markets are still trading in the positive territory. In terms of sectoral indices, you've got the PSU banking index and the pharma index, which are gaining in trade. And on the weak side, as we already highlighted for you, Nifty IT is the sole sectoral index, which is right now seeing cuts of almost 1% on account of your heavy weights, uh, seeing uh, some bit of selling with regard to TCS and also INFI seeing selling pressure in today's session. But net net, India WIX is also down 1% in trade. Pull up the Nifty contributors list. That's going to give you a clear picture as to which are the stocks which are capping the moves in today's session on the upside where there is IT on one end. You've got something like Reliance and ITC. I think uh, both these stocks have been giving almost 50% of the gains that you're seeing on Nifty. Right now actually 30 points out of the 45 points gain has been coming on account of Reliance Industries as well as ITC and TCS and Infi have been dragging the index lower. Stock specific, a lot of stocks moving around. Jet Airways is down 8% in trade. Bata is down 4%. Apollo Tires hitting 52 week low and also something like Jubilant Food Works that's seen cuts of 4% in trade. But besides this, there are Fab 4 stocks also and let's check with Sharad Dube which are those four stocks which are featuring on his list. Hi Sharad, good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon Navni. The first stock is Ingenious India which is up by almost more than 3% and uh, this has risen almost more than a month after the company signs a contract with Mongol Refinery for the construction of a crude oil refinery plant. Up next we are having Vedanta which is up by 3.5% after 17.9 lakh shares were exchanged in a block deal. We don't know the details yet but we'll definitely get you the details post the market hours. Up next, we are having Gateway District Parks, which is up by almost 4.93% after a strong quarterly results have come up. But there, it has been also aided by an exceptional gain of around 280 odd crore rupees, with the top line increasing by 17%. The last stock today we are having is Muthut Finance, which is up by almost 4%, with a very high open interest of around 32% seen. And also, its volumes are trading at almost six times its 20 day moving average. Back to you. All right, Shara, thanks very much uh, for that. Those are the Fab Four stocks uh, of the afternoon. Uh, Rahul, one last question uh, before we let you go. So, you know, while you've uh, you know, always joined us and spoken about specific conviction calls that you've had, you know, has that changed in any way? Have you remodeled that? Is there a rejig in that? So it's very tough to find value right now, even though the market's corrected. But I think I'll probably leave you with one idea from the BFSI space where I think, uh, you know, there could be some value accretion, uh, and that is SBI Life Insurance. Uh, I think it's probably trading coming to you at about 1.92 times uh, mm -hmm. price to embedded value. Uh, it's got about an 18% return on embedded value, 20% ROE, uh, and it's probably got the best in class metrics for any insurance company. If you look at settlement ratios, expense ratio, policy complaints, claim complaints, uh, the largest bank insurance network courtesy its uh, parent, uh, employee productivity. I think we've you know gone through a whole host of uh, parameters. And the best part about this sector, Devina, is that uh, it takes eight and a half years for anyone to break even. Yeah. So it's a very huge barrier to entry. And in the last 10 years, you had only one new entrant, which is Edelweiss Tokyo, and that was as far back as FY12. So while the entire credit... That's not competition, right? Now. So absolutely not. So the point I was trying to make is that while the entire credit space in India is booming with competition, you know, the last decade has seen 2,000 NBFCs come up, hmm. about 10 or 11 payment banks, many universal banks, all of that happening, fighting for credit. Life insurance in India is just 24 players. And XLIC, uh, you know, if you look at the other 23 players, uh, the top four, which is SBI Life, IPRU, HDFC, and Max, have more market share than the bottom 19 put together. And that's only going to increase, I think. So I think uh, given these points that I said, I think on every parameter, I think SBI Life is best in class. And it's not too expensive on valuations for the return ratios that it has. So it's it's a good protection. Pro I mean, it, there is not too much of the protection business, but it is a protection product. <laughs> so I think as the penetration of insurance rises and people understand the need for having this protection cover for their families and, and, and the likes, this is a good structural long-term uh, BFSI play to have, which is 
relatively okay on valuations and strong earnings out. Outlook. I'm just going to squeeze in one last question, sure. Rahul. Sorry. Um, what's the view on pharma, A, on Sun Pharma? And other than that, do you see pricing pressures once again coming back after seven companies have been named in U.S. lawsuit for inflating prices? It's a very tough call to take. You know, Sun Pharma is actually our topic, and it was uh, it was a hard pill to swallow literally yesterday what happened. And I hope those fine numbers that are floating around don't come through. But uh, I think it's a black box right now. I think the problem, Namneet, is that uh, people don't know what kind of multiples to assign to these companies anymore because of governance issues. So uh, I think just wait for the storm to blow over. Uh, we still have a buy rating on Sun Pharma uh, as we do on say Natco and, and a few others but uh, it's getting a bit tough to convince people to buy when you know. For sector as a whole do you see pricing pressure? I, I don't think I mean of course the noise in the last couple of days has re-emerged but I think if you look at the commentary in Q3 it seemed to suggest that for most players the pricing pressures had bottomed out. I'd like to believe that's still the case, uh, but I think more clarity will emerge post these conference calls. But like I said, in the context of what happened last night and we, when we spoke to investors, it's probably not something that people are rushing to buy in at, at this point in time. Okay, Rahul, we'll leave it at that note. Appreciate you joining Thank us you so in the studios today and taking us through your views on the markets. Okay, let's move on to the chart of the day. Then Avenue Supermarts ha had made a virtue post of posting the industry's highest same store sales growth over the last few quarter. The DMAT brand has been one of the most successful retailers in the country, but the profit margin has finally tapered in the last quarter. Somit Sarkar takes us through those details. Somit. Well, Avenue Supermarts, the company which operates DMART, reported its highest net profit growth in the last three quarters. But if you see, it has been earnings lower profit on every incremental sale. Now, the company's net profit margin in the fourth quarter of financial year 2019 declined to 4%, its lowest in the last two years, because of the cost pressures that the company has been seeing. Now, the company's focus on price competitiveness and higher depreciation due to expansion led to this lower net profit margins in the fourth quarter of financial year 2019. Now, even going forward, this pressure is expected to remain on the company because of the competition seen in the grocery retail space. However, the company's revenue and EBITDA grew 28% and 32% compared to last year, mainly on the back of the 12 new stores added by the company in the fourth quarter of financial year 2019. All right, Samit, thanks very much for that. That is the chart of the day. Bringing in uh, Avinash Gorak Shekhar of Joinery Capital Services. He's joining us on the show right now. I mean, I should just want a quick uh, call on Delta Corp from you before we uh, get dive deep and get into uh, other stock-specific uh, movers. But Delta Corp, according to you, yesterday was that big 13% correction. Some clarification from the management. No notice received yet. Uh, UBS still, you know, uh, questioning the legitimacy of this particular uh, uh, notice. What's your take? So I think clearly, uh, you know, the management has clarified on the exchanges that uh, they have not received any such notice uh, from the government authorities. I would believe that, uh, you know, looking at the kind of revenue the company has generated, you know, the GST demand looks a pretty uh, large number. I would believe that, you know, some sort of uh, clarification further would be required because I think it's very premature to believe that, uh, you know, 6,000 crores has been evaded. But I think overall, uh, uh, Devina, this business is very lucrative. If you see the kind of cash flow generation and the kind of uh, uh, margins this business enjoys. I would not be surprised that once clarity comes in, the stock would again, uh, you know, uh, probably get re-rated. But in the near term, considering the market volatility, uh, you know, markets would definitely be cautious about any kind of news flow like this. Okay. Uh, that's on Delta Corp. Uh, let me just uh, uh, pose a Sun Pharma since we spoke about that with Rahul. 5% uh, uptick in today's session, 419 is where the stock's trading at. Sachitanan, the quick word on Sun Pharma at 420. All right, I don't think he can hear me. Amar Singh, what about you, Sun Pharma? I would say that uh, uh, Sun Pharma, the way the stock has been uh, uh, trading, and yesterday was an extremely volatile uh, uh, session for Sun Pharma, I would say so rather stay away from the stock because you never know what's, uh, what news is uh, next to come about the stock. So I would say rather stay away from this. Okay. The other one in today's session that's making big moves is in India Bulls Housing Finance, which is up about six odd percent 
Bharti Airtel, that one makes a move of 6%. It's up at 338 right now. Should actually pull up to see what a Vodafone idea is also doing at this point. Remember, the rights issue at 12 bucks was very lucrative. The moment the equity shares hit the market, you saw that big slump of about 8-9% uh, where there was some amount of exit that happened at around a price point of about 14, 14 half. Currently, it's down about 2 odd percent. Uh, what would you do? Uh, uh, Amar Singh with the, an either a Vodafone idea or a Bharti Airtel? I would say looking at uh, Bharti Airtel, uh, uh, Bharti Airtel uh, looks positive on the charts. I would say on the intermediate term trend as well as the long term trend, uh, uh, now the stock uh, looks positive. Only what it needs to uh, uh, do is consistently trade above the 340 mark because uh, uh, on 7th May it had made a high of 341, again it had corrected. Earlier also, if you look at it, somewhere around uh, 3rd of April, it had made a high of 333-34 levels. And currently, it, uh, today is made a high of 339-40. So if the stock manages to sustain above 330 levels and uh, specifically above 340, then definitely I would say that the trend, ha the trend has changed and the stock then uh, could rally all the way towards 365-370 levels. As far as the trend on the technical uh, parameters are concerned, uh, on the weekly charts, on the monthly charts, uh, the stock looks uh, positive. And the daily charts also, the stock has moved from oversold territory, but sustaining above 340 is the key. Okay, um, just take a look at uh, stocks which are not doing well in the session today. By the way, Jubilant Foodworks has slipped further. So keep that at the back of your mind. Once Sachitanan is back, we'll try and connect with him as to talk about uh, what next. It's down 3%, it was a short call. Uh, Kadila Healthcare is trading at fresh 52 week lows. Apollo Tires, 3.5% lower, and that's trading close to fresh 52 week lows. Bosch, about a couple of percentage lower, points lower, and trading at 52 week lows. And Sterlite Technologies, 7% lower, 165, trading close to fresh 52 week lows. Um, okay, firstly to Sachitanan. Sachitanan, you had a call on Jubilant Foodworks, now down 3%. What does one do if initiated a short earlier? Should stay short and carry home the shorts or take profits here? So I think uh, it's a very good level wherein uh, profit should be, uh, you know, captured. In fact, uh, this was a uh, call against the market trend, so probably, you know, it won't be a good idea to carry forward this particular trade. Uh, definitely, 1,200 levels uh, are decent uh, enough, and uh, one should uh, book profits here. Okay, book profits here on Jubilant Foodworks. That's the call from Sachitanan. Avinash, uh, two stocks that have really collapsed the last few days. Starlight Technologies at 165, Kadila Healthcare. Uh, at 52 week lows too. Track any of these closely? Uh, I think uh, Kedila, I think clearly uh, we had a you know negative view considering the fact that they had a little bit of uh, regulatory issues. But I think the fall in uh, Starlight Technologies Neeraj is quite surprising. I think uh, despite the fact that uh, the management made it very clear and gave a notification to the exchange uh, that the pledging shares would be removed by July. I think the markets seem to be not having the kind of conviction and the faith uh, that you know this event uh, will happen. And I think till the time it doesn't happen, I think this is probably the main reason uh, the stock has taken a very strong beating uh, you know once this announcement came it was around 190 200 uh, it's come down by almost uh, 35 40 odd rupees uh, i would believe that you know this is more to do with sentiment and rather than to, to do with fundamentals i would still uh, give it a chance and probably wait for a couple of quarters our sense is that uh, neeraj despite the fact that ofc prices have gone soft i would not be surprised that you know the traction in earnings and top line is definitely uh, pretty strong and i don't think there's any reason to be so negative on the stock as of now okay I don't, Avinash believes there's no reason to be so negative, but there's something that's gone wrong. You can argue that the valuations are looking okay and the promise from the management on growth is looking okay, but somebody's selling out there and selling consistently for the stock to see these levels at which it is trading right now at 165, based on the, recommend, based on the guidance by the management, it's trading at 10 times. 10 times current year earnings for a company which is clocked in an ROC of 34% in the end of the last quarter. Something's amiss, whether this is mutual fund selling or otherwise, don't quite know, but something's amiss when it comes to Starlight Tech. Okay, uh, let's get a sense of what dealing rooms are recommending in the session today. There's also an SRF Concord, which we'll bring you highlights of in moments from now. But first, a check with Yatin Mota as to what his dealing room sources are telling him about trade today. Yatin, um, Quite a volatile market, even though we are in the green. But what are your sources telling you? Uh, Neeraj, we are green, and you know, after uh, almost eight, nine uh, days of red, uh, we are finally bouncing back. A lot of stocks to talk about, uh, but uh, specifically, dealing rooms are focusing on a couple of stocks uh, that they are speaking, uh, uh, you know, about to clients. Uh, Siemens, uh, you know, that is one stock 
uh, which is uh, done exceedingly well in, 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 the, in this quarter. Of course, the management said, uh, said that the order backlog is at a six-year high and client inquiries are picking up. Uh, the stock is up 3%, but dealers do believe that uh, from here on also, a lot of uh, FII interest is there in the stock and the buying could continue there on the upside. Uh, Indian Bank, uh, they came out with a surprise loss this quarter, but despite the loss, the stock is in the green, 4% up for that one. Uh, last time I checked, it was almost flat at 230 rupees, uh, 228 rupees, so some good buying scene in the last half an hour of trade. Dealers recommend a BTST strategy here. And finally, SRF, uh, that is one stock. Uh, of course, the conference call highlights are on, on your screens, uh, but the stock is at uh, record highs. And dealers uh, do indicate that there is a lot of short covering which has happened as far as uh, uh, SRF is concerned. Yesterday the stock was uh, soft, today morning also it was soft. Uh, but the kind of move that the stock has seen, uh, clearly dealing rooms are indicating uh, you know, some bit of short covering which has happened in the stock so far. Okay, yeah, then thanks for bringing that dealing room check with us. And I'll just take forward that SRF uh, point but uh, with Avinash. Before that, let's just get a technical check because this is the stock which has also seen a lot of good build-up on the future side. Uh, it did have a gap down opening, but it's seen a very good recovery in the intraday session. Amar Singh, if I could come to you at 26.10, if somebody had taken a long position when the market was down in the morning, what would you advise? Uh, I would say that one can uh, definitely hold on to the stock because uh, uh, technically the stock uh, uh, is very strong on the on the intermediate term as well as the long term that's on the monthly charts and also if you look at the stock on 2nd May it had made a high of uh, 2617 and uh, today's high is uh, 2625 so it's breached that level so sustaining about 26 uh, 15 20 levels the stock could rally higher significantly towards uh, 26 70 26 80 levels. Mm, this conference call uh, takeaways uh, on your screens for SRF, uh, as you can see them down below. Stock's doing well for itself in the session. And management says they expect operations to remain, uh, come back to normalcy in the next five to six odd months. Five and a half percent higher for SRF right now. Uh, Sterlite Tech, we already spoke about that one. And Oberoi, Realty and Edelweiss, two stocks. Oberoi had a different reaction to numbers when it reported them, but today's session looks a little weak down about 6% and an Edelweiss on the back of its numbers, 232 crores in terms of profit performance, net interest income dropped by 42% this quarter. Avinash, Edelweiss? Oh, I think numbers definitely, Devina, have been quite uh, disappointing and I think the management reiterated the fact that uh, headwinds in the NBFC space have become quite challenging. I think the only respite has been, uh, they have mentioned that, you know, to aid and uh, strengthen the balance sheet, they have taken a higher provisioning uh, in the quarter four. So I would believe that, uh, you know, despite the fact that the management seems to be pretty confident, I think liquidity is going to be a key challenge. Uh, if liquidity gets constrained over the next, say, one or two quarters, uh, we could see a little bit of slowdown, you know, on the fund based, uh, business. So I would believe that, you know, at these levels, maybe it would be better to wait for some more time before we some, uh, see some more clarity. I mean, I have a quick thought on SRF's numbers, pretty strong, but uh, uh, valuation-wise, what would your call be on this one? In fact, Navneet, the uh, numbers have been pretty strong, but the stock has uh, taken off quite uh, sharply. And I would believe that, you know, going forward, uh, looking at the way specialty chemicals business has panned out, uh, I would believe that uh, considering the kind of shortages of some products in China and considering that product prices are still rolling high, uh, we could see, you know, these kind of uh, stronger numbers for maybe at least one or two quarters. After that, I think one would have to take a fresh review. India Bulls housing is your top gainer on Nifty now. That stock's up nearly 6% in trade. But let's take uh, closing strategies from our technical experts. Um, Amar, any BTST or any STBT for tomorrow's trade? Yeah, I would say that uh, one can look at uh, uh, Kotak Mahindra Bank. Um, uh, this is one stock uh, uh, which is uh, which continues to hold and uh, currently is trading around 1380 levels. So any pullback in the stock towards 1370, 1375 ideally can be used as a buying opportunity with a stop loss uh, below 1360 and a target of uh, 1415 on the upside. Sachdanan, what about you? Well, uh, I have a uh, sell recommendation on UPL. So if you look at the overall structure on the intraday scale, the stock has been oscillating within a triangular formation. And if you look at the RSI, you know, the relative strength has been weakening. So probably we may see a breakdown coming up soon. And with that intention, some short positions can be considered here. 963 would be the stop loss for the trade on futures. And we're expecting a move towards 935. All right, Yuko Bank numbers out, a net loss of 1552 crores versus a net loss of 21.
100 odd crores. So there has been an improvement. There's been an increase in net interest income as well as small bank. Uh, gross NPA has also improved, so your asset quality improvement has come about on the back of strong interest income. A uh, stock's up about 5 odd percent right now. Um, the other one I want to talk about is Aisha Motors. We've been seeing how the stock has come off significantly in the last one year. I think a drop of 40 percent is what Aisha Motors has actually seen. So that's about 2.5 percent higher. In today's session, after slumping in early morning trade, I think it had gone down to about 18,600 odd from where it's come back up to about 19,250. Avinash, Aisha Motors, no, I think, uh, Devina, at least for the next one or two quarters, uh, we could see a little bit of uh, weakness on the stock considering that, uh, you know, consumption trends have gone down and I think the main frontline product that is Royal Enfield uh, is definitely showing some signs of, of uh, strain. I would believe that, you know, unless and until we see a further kind of, uh, you know, up move in the volume growth, uh, because in the management call also the management did admit it that demand in the market has gone down and despite the fact that, you know, they have now built in the intermittent capacity Chennai. I think uh, most important is, you know, I think uh, incremental demand is not coming. So I think for the time being, uh, one could definitely expect further softness. Mm. Okay. okay. Uh, Vinash, the other stock, I believe you track Minda Industries, but Minda Corp is the one which is uh, related, of course, and up about 14%. Any thoughts here? I think, uh, Neeraj, both of them are auto component plays and, yes. uh, you know, they have a large exposure to the passenger car segment. I think uh, Minda Corp, which you mentioned, has got a large exposure not only in the domestic market but even in the global markets. Uh, I would believe that, you know, they have a large presence in the domestic as well as the global markets and I think uh, one could not make out, uh, you know, what's the main reason for this 14% spike. But overall, I would believe the domestic business is definitely going to see some sort of slowdown. On the export side, hopefully, you know, they have a large order book, so probably that could fuel their growth, you know, at least for the next one or two quarters. Mm. Gothrich Properties is the other one. Uh, we spoke about that one, and now it's past 800. 804 is where it's trading at, so a good 47-point bump up on the stock. I think it's trading near a day's highs. Uh, Sachitanan, would you trade Gothrich Properties at 804? Well, the recovery from its 200-day uh, exponential moving average has been uh, very good. In fact, uh, you know, the stock uh, uh, just cured once below its 100-day uh, exponential moving average. So overall, I think uh, it's a very good sign. A double bottom kind of formation has been established. And we I won't be surprised if we, can, if we see this move getting extended quickly towards 835, 840. So definitely long bias uh, should be maintained on this particular stock. On a closing basis, a stop loss should be placed somewhere close to 765. Fill up DCM Shriram, that too has gone up in trade. It's seen gains of nearly 10%. And besides that, you've also got uh, Praj Industries, Balram Purchini. Remember, DCM Shriram, the quarter was very good. And when we spoke to the management, they did highlight there was some bit of turnaround um, with regard to sugar business. There were some mark to mark losses in the base quarter. But now uh, those losses had gone about. In fact, they posted a profit for this segment as well, 9.5%. Uh, Avinash, before we thank you, any thoughts on any of these stocks, DC, DCM Shriram, Praj, or any of the sugar companies? Please. I think uh, Balrampur Chini and DCM Shriram uh, Navneet should do well. I think DCM Shriram is a mix of uh, chemical fertilizers as well as PVC uh, and sugar. I would believe that uh, for DCM Shriram, I think the bigger uh, you know bump up would come in from the ethanol business. But I think uh, from the sugar pack, I think Balrampur Chini and Dhampur, I think probably the uh, ethanol kind of mix is going to make more money for them. So I think all these stocks probably in the next one or two quarters, you could see a lot of earnings growth being driven most by, by the ethanol business rather than the sugar business. Okay. That's very much. Avinash, take a moment to thank you for joining in today and giving us your thoughts. Appreciate your time. All right. Stocks which have um, done really well. We've discussed some of these uh, with um, Avinash. Uh, um, I just want the closing thoughts on some of the active movers and if you were long, whether you would take them home. That's the question. Amar, to you first. Uh, if you were long SRF today at the intraday lower levels, is it prudent to take money off the table or would you carry home the profits? Yeah, I would say that uh, uh, I would look at booking profits in this particular stock because uh, earlier also the stock uh, seems to have uh, reversed from 26, uh, 15, 26, 20 levels. So uh, till the time that is not taken out, we could witness some profit booking. But yes, the trend for the stock remains positive. And once it sustains about 26, 20, then it could uh, head towards 26, uh, 65, 26, 70 levels. All right. That's SRF for you. Uh, Amar Singh, uh, 
a reliance industries, the recovery after a slump period of uh, the last few trading weeks. At 12.66, does one go long on reliance? Uh, I would say that uh, reliance again, uh, yes, uh, uh, today has been a sharp uh, recovery, but uh, again on the higher side, uh, 1270, 1275, that's a very crucial zone of resistance. Uh, we are to witness uh, some profit booking coming around those levels. Only sustaining above 1270, 1275, then we could say that the stock could rally towards 1310 levels. But I would say that higher levels will be sold into and we'll witness profit booking around 1270 levels. Jamen, stay on. We'll take in closing thoughts from you. But here's how the markets are shutting shop today. The Nifty up almost a percent. The Nifty Bank not so much. As we said at the start of the show, it's not a bank-led move. A lot of other stocks are participating. Reliance, Bharti and the likes. And we'll talk about them. Mid-caps and the small caps didn't fall as much yesterday as the headline numbers. And in today's session, have just about managed to reach at par with what the large caps have done. So it's not a bad day. Broad-based gains, you wouldn't complain. Even though the market break may have looked slightly iffy. And we'll talk about the advanced plan as well in moments from now. But first, the large cap moves and what's moved and what's not. Uh, India was housing, 6% yes, but Bharti Airtel is the real star today. 6% up in trade. Sun Pharma has bounced back materially, about 5.5%. Uh, gains for State Bank of India and Indusind Bank. And then the big boy, Reliance Industries, bounces up. By the way, Aisha Motors too, at 2.5%, uh, has recouped some of the losses that it's had the last few days. What's not done well? Tech MTC is essentially IT is being taken to the cleaners. Um, in between that, Bajaj Finance and Bajaj Auto. Uh, Bajaj Finance and FinServe come out with numbers day after tomorrow, ahead of the numbers slightly weak. M&M slightly weak, Kotak Bank slightly weak, but those are small lo losses. Essentially, IT has been on the receiving end and some of the heavyweights uh, like Reliance, etc. are on the gaining end. Just one quick look at what's happened to the market breadth. And as we told you, during uh, when we started the show, it was somewhere around here, the breadth was improving. Now it's converged and the advance is marginally higher than the decline. So all round, good day of trade. Speaking of advances and declines in the broader markets, now we need uh, what, the mood, you, you, the, the advances were, may have been higher than the declines, but the indices were anyways positive. What have been the standout moves? Well, Neeraj, some reprieve definitely coming in for the markets today. And there were a lot of stocks moving around. Let me start off with the gainers first. Manapuram Finance, remember Mutut Finance came out with the numbers and Manapuram comes out with its numbers tomorrow. So, uh, street anticipating good set of numbers because Mutut's numbers were great. So, 7% higher for this one. DHEL was the other one which bounced back in today's trading session. That stock's closing the day at days high, around the mark of 64. Uh, from the pharma pack, you had Walkhard, which was up and about. Remember, this is uh, after uh, stocks like Cadilla has been hitting 52-week low. And, of course, Sun Pharma also bounced back today. So 7% higher for this one. SRF, we've been discussing this counter on the show. Good set of numbers in the traders giving it a thumbs up, rather the market giving it a thumbs up. Long positions also seen on the future side. Praj Industries went up in today's trade. That stock saw gains of about nearly 8 to 9%. Uh, the other one, uh, a couple of your beaten down counters for, for the likes of IRB Infra, which was down yesterday, 9% gains coming in uh, for that counter, 8% uh, today. And Minda Corp, that stock went up on high volumes too on the cash side, 15% higher closing at days high. And Siemens came out with the numbers, margins, double digit margins coming around for March quarter of 11.5 versus 9.8 which was seen in base quarter and also IFL that stock saw some bit of gains in today's trade stock closing with gains of almost 8 percent a lot of losers also there when you had stocks advancing so something like jet airways continues to reel under pressure no respite for this one seven percent lower Karnataka bank the numbers came in not that great set of numbers Karnataka bank down almost five percent Apollo tires this one touched its 52 week low in today's trade three percent lower year of shorting also seen. Jubilin comes out with its earnings tomorrow. Ahead of that, there was some shorting seen for this counter for sure. As you can see in the last half an hour of trade, the stock did fall of about 3%. Bata was the other one which was weak today and also something like Kadila touching 52 week low from the steel pack. You had Steel Authority, which came under selling pressure in today's session. That saw selling of nearly 6% at closing around the levels of 47.6. All right, so probably uh, after 9 or 10 straight days of losses, a uh, day in the green is a, a welcome move. And that's what you've got on the Nifty and the Nifty Bank supporting. So Nifty 50 finally closing about 6 tenths of a percent higher above that 100-day moving average, uh, which it had breached in intraday trade. Nifty Bank up about half an odd percent. Let's quickly take a look at what's contributed. Obviously, it has to be Reliance, about two and a half odd percent higher for that one. 
uh, Reliance holds a weightage of 10%. ITC, 5.5% weightage, but that's probably uh, you know the, the next best in terms of the heavyweight and the kind of gains it's put up. 1.9% higher in, in the intraday session. But the losers then, IT is a pocket has looked weak. So your top three uh, uh, stocks which have contributed on the downside include the, the heavyweights like TCS and Infosys and Mitech Mahindra uh, looking weak. But all in all, uh, not a bad performance for the day. Well, not at all. Uh, after a lot of trading sessions, we're getting to see some green. So India volatility index also, when the markets were up today, we didn't see uh, that index moving higher much. That's closing with cuts of nearly 2%. But remember, 26, 27, it's still at elevated levels. In terms of participation, let's just check how the turnover panned out in today's trade. FNO turnover definitely picked up. And even the NSE cash, which is at about 35,000, it's higher than what we saw in yesterday's trade. Should see whether this actually translated into a bigger FI number on the cash desk. Oh, yes, I think it, that's going to be in focus because they've been yeah, selling for the last morning. seven, eight sessions. Yes. And also the advanced decline ratio, just a quick snapshot of the broader market performance and how that shaped up. So as you can see, the, the, the fag end of trade was pretty volatile. You did have a lot of crosses and crosses. But towards the end, probably at an even keel for the advances and declines uh, for the session. But quick closing comments then as we step into trade tomorrow morning, what are our technical experts recommending? Uh, Amar Singh, let's start off with you first. Uh, I would say that uh, uh, Nifty seems to have found some support, but again, uh, uh, it needs to uh, sustain above 11,300 uh, levels because that's a crucial uh, zone of resistance. And taking that out, yes, then it could rally towards uh, 11,370-400 levels. But again, those would be the levels where we'll witness selling pressure, so high levels will be sold into. And uh, yes, on the downside, 11,100 now should act as, a, as an immediate uh, short-term uh, support for the, for the index. All right, Sachit Anand, what about you? Well, as we discussed, you know, markets, uh, you know, uh, they are trying to find a bottom here, and I think uh, this is a zone wherein uh, a bottom should be witnessed in 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 a in, in couple of days from here on. So definitely, in fact, uh, in, in, even if we see a further slide in the market, somewhere close to 11,130 in tomorrow's session, you know, that particular decline should be utilized to create some long positions here. Uh, the bias uh, from here on uh, remains positive, and the stop loss that we have discussed is on a weekly uh, closing basis. Is of 11,040. We are expecting that uh, you know major part of the decline has been over, and uh, we may see some stability coming up in next couple of trading sessions, and market could swing back again uh, towards 11,500 very soon. Right. We leave it at that, gentlemen. Thank you so very much for joining us this afternoon, Amar Singh as well as Sachitan and Taker. Appreciate you both taking out the time. And with that, it's a wrap on this edition of Countdown from uh, Navneet, myself and the entire team that's put this show together, including Neeraj. Thanks very much for watching. The Market Wrap comes up next.